Hi, my name is Anderson, and I'm a junior studying aerospace engineering here at Purdue University. I'm Ritwik. I'm a rising sophomore at Purdue studying computer science. Hi, my name is Suman Moon. I am a second year PhD student in School of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Purdue University. We would like to present to you our 2022 Quantum Game Club Summer Project. And the goal of our project is to solve a generated maze using a quantum computer. At the core of the user interface for the game is maze generation. After trying a number of algorithms such as randomized Cruxels algorithm and the Prims algorithm, I finally opted for the recursive backtracking algorithm to generate the maze as it seemed to generate more random mazes and was visually more appealing. The entire idea of maze generation is based on depth for search. Uh, DFS is a graph traversal algorithm with, uh, with the idea behind it being that uh, it starts at the root node and then travels down deep and as far as possible into a particular branch of the graph until it encounters an end, upon which it backtracks to the last unvisited node in the stack and repeats the same process, thus eventually traversing the entire graph. An extra stack of, mem of memory is needed to keep track of the nodes that have been visited so far so that we could backtrack to the unvisited node upon traversing a particular branch. For example, in this particular graph, the traversal starts at A, which is the root node, and then we travel down the first branch A, B, D as far as possible. Next, we backtrack to E and then travel through E, H, and L, and then we again backtrack to M and then to N. And just repeating, uh, repeating this process uh, recursively uh, over all of the other nodes, we travel through all of the other nodes in the following order. I, O, P, C, F, G, J, K, and Q. The way we utilize this approach to form the maze is by imagining the maze on the left uh, in the form of an undirected graph, uh, as you can see here on the right, where each cell is a node and every pair of adjacent cells is connected with an edge. To generate the maze, we simply traverse through this entire graph using the depth first search approach with the only additional detail being that as we travel along uh, any edge and move from one cell to another, we carve out the maze accordingly along that path by coloring the cells and removing the walls between them. This is the code for the algorithm. Uh, I use the Pygame Python library to generate all of the GUI. The code is roughly divided into two major functions, build grid and carve out maze. The build grid function, as the name suggests, uh, is responsible for displaying the entire grid on the screen. The loop runs from 1 to 11 in a nested fashion uh, through the grid with a width and length of 10 cells. And on each iteration, the walls of the grid are made by drawing a white line, as you could see here, uh, which just represents the boundaries of that particular cell. Once the, once the entire grid is formed, uh, the, all the walls and the entire grid is stored inside the grid variable. The carve out maze function, which you could see here, is the function that carves out the actual maze by performing the, the depth first search algorithm on the entire grid starting at the root node, which in our case is the upper leftmost cell. To perform this algorithm, we use two variables, visited and stack. Visited keeps track of all the cells that have been visited until then, and stack is used to store the set of unvisited nodes. And every time a node is visited that does not have any unvisited neighbors, it's just popped off the stack. We loop, as you could see here, we loop until the length of the stack is greater than zero, which means until there are still unvisited nodes left. While looping randomly, uh, uh, as you could see here in this uh, line of code, we, we randomly select one of the neighbors of the current cell that has not yet been visited, and upon which we up update the visited list and make the adjacent unvisited cell to be the current node. In order to actually carve out the maze path using Pygame, we call one of the push functions uh, which are defined here, which fills up the appropriate cells on the screen with blue color, uh, thus overriding the white walls between the cells, which creates a continuous path. We simply repeat this process in a loop performing DFS over the graph until each cell is visited. And as I said before, if any time it happens that the current cell doesn't have any unvisited neighbors, then it's just popped off the stack and the algorithm backtracks to the last unvisited node on the stack. So this is just a demonstration of the maze generation algorithm.
yeah so that was the entire maze generation algorithm using depth first search a next step for the front end part of the project would be to involve the user with the game by having two players where one is where one is controlled by the computer and the other one is user controlled the aim of the user would be to catch the automated player before it solves the maze although we haven't been able to incorporate the following features along with our current maze generation algorithm using recursive backtracking we have a prototype for this which generates a predefined maze every time and has two players this is just a demo of that so here the red turtle is controlled by the computer and would just try to solve the maze automatically whereas the blue turtle is user controlled and i could move around the blue turtle in the maze uh, using the arrow keys yeah so as you can see the red turtle is uh, computer controlled and is just trying to solve the maze and i am controlling the blue turtle using the arrow keys and if at any time they come in contact Uh, then the game should end because the blue because the user was able to uh, catch hold of the computer controlled player so as i said before this algorithm generates a predefined maze every time so in the future we would be incorporating this feature of having two players moving around in the maze along with the depth for search for maze generation now anderson would be explaining our implementation of the quantum shortest path algorithm using catalyst which runs on the quantum computer and solves the maze by finding the shortest path. Now that we have the maze generated, we're ready to feed that into a quantum machine to solve for the solution. For our project, we've decided to use QCS Catalyst for its quantum ready optimization problem solver. The main challenge we faced was that the sample constraint function from the Catalyst library is not designed for dealing with graph optimization problems. So we will have to find a way to convert the graph consisting of nodes and edges into a linear constraint optimization question. Now let's take a look at a randomly generated 4x4 maze. We're starting in the top left corner and ending at the bottom right. With the visualization here, I am going to show you how we can convert this graph into a linear constraint optimization question in a few simple steps. With the topology of the maze in mind, we can first convert this into a graph problem. We can view each cell in the maze as a node, and the purple spaces between them as the edges connecting the nodes. The list of all connected edges was obtained during the maze generation talked about earlier. We can then label the edges as following. And keep in mind that only the purple edges are traversable, while the blue edges are indicating the walls in the maze. And now with a list of connected edges in hand and all the edges labeled, we then were able to create a spanning tree starting from the edge one, propagating all the way down until it reaches to the edge leading into the ending node. To put this in terms of linear constraint functions, we will be able to express this spanning tree with the functions on the right. Each line indicates that you can only traverse one edge out of the list. For example, on third line, x8 plus x9 plus x12 equals one, means that you can only pick one out of the three edges. Similarly, we can also look at line five, where x7 plus x14 plus x22 equals one, meaning that there's only one out of these three edges that is included in the solution to the maze. And now that with the same logic, we can create another spanning tree starting from the ending node on the bottom right. And this spanning tree can also be expressed with the constraint functions on the right. Putting the constraint functions we've just discussed it into Python and setting the cost of traversing each edge to be one, therefore we have our objective function. And now our program is ready to go. After running the program in the terminal, we can see that Catalyst gave us the most optimal solution to be edge 1, 5, 9, 10, 14, and 21. And we put that into the maze on the left, we can see that that is indeed the solution to our maze. And this is how a generated maze is solved using a quantum computer. For our summer project, we initially want to incorporate the randomness of a quantum measurement into generating the maze's path. 
Due to the short period, we decide to leave this feature to be integrated in the future. Although we'd like to show our preliminary results and circuit implementation on the Qiskit. In our two-dimensional square gridded maze, we can move in four directions, which corresponds to north, south, east, and west. And in decimal, that would be from zero to three. So we need a minimum of four decimal numbers by taking the log base of two to four, we determined that we need at least two qubits. So this is our two qubit circuit implemented in our Qiskit. There's two qubits and after these, each qubits, how to mark it is connected. And then measurement is done at each qubits. To verify our measurement results, we plotted in a histogram and roughly the probabilities measured are uh, broken down approximately near 25%. Um, there's a small deviation from these this ideal number and this is probably due to the measurement noise incorporated into the quantum circuit. One thing to note in our uh, circuit implementation is that we don't want to entangle these two qubits. Then um, these two qubits, after entanglement, the output would be one of the four bell bases. And then bell bases is maximally entangled that um, only half of the, the range of the numbers would show up then that's not what we want. So we wanna avoid entangling these two qubits. Now we're ready to uh, go over the Qiskit code. So this is our Qiskit code and how it should be done is first have to configure the user credentials and check which quantum computers are available. And we pick the the provider um, named IBM Q Lima is our backend. And then we specify our circuit implementation. Then we specify how many times we want to measure the circuit. In our case, that's 10,000 times. After then, we could save our results, store our result into a variable, and plot the results in the histogram and verify if, if this is desired or not. then we could check our stored result random numbers in a string format that has the binary information, binary output of qubit, space, binary input, zero, zero. With after some post-processing, we can convert these binary outputs to a decimal number. And we can output that into a text file. This concludes our final presentation for the summer project. We would like to thank National Defense Education Program and IQ Park for sponsoring our work.